We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Hello everyone, I'm here from First Updates Now, Any Recap, with Team 1126 Sparks. I'm here with Aaron, Andrew, and Tyler, and we're going to talk to you about some of the, the cool subsystems yeah. we saw on the robot today. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about your ball intake and storage system? Yeah. So right now we have five Animar compliant wheels in the front, and we wanted to sort of keep our... Um, we want. We wanted to keep our intake inside of our robot perimeter, mainly to prevent something outside hitting one of the objects in, um, around the field. So it's just to prevent things from breaking as much. So once it comes up, we have a flap that provides compression as it comes up. It shoots up and then hits um, ramps. And the ramps just it sort of sorts it out with gravity and then falls right into the uh, polycord belt system that we have. And as it comes in, we have sensors on the intake, right um, on the inside of right where the uh, polycord starts, and up right by the shooter. And what those do is they uh, read when balls and how many balls we have, and they index the balls once we get one. So we get one, belts move a little bit, two, move a little bit, three, and then once it reads that so we have five balls in the system, and once these read, it stops so that we don't accidentally feed balls into our shooter system. Um, a little fun thing that we have over here is just a little flap that we can take off because we noticed that we kind of want to work on the inside so it just easily comes off. This is a fun thing that we added. Really, that's just the basic of what our intake system can do. Awesome. Can you show us it in action? Uh, yeah, we can. All right, awesome. So now that all the balls are in the system, can you tell us a bit more about the shooter mechanism that you have? So our shooter uses three 775 Pros to uh, power the shooter. Two of them are for the flywheel, another one is for the turret. We use limelight and an encoder on the flywheel to determine where we, like, um, how fast to shoot it and where we're aiming so we can mostly shoot uh, for three points in the inner port. Uh, we have a custom-made aluminum flywheel in the center. It provides about a half inch of compression and some tape that uh, allows the balls to help stick a little. Uh, it provides about 340 degrees of rotation, uh, 170, you know, 150 in each. Anything else? <laughs> All right, so going over to this side of the robot, it looks like you have a pretty cool, cool climbing mechanism there. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, sure. So basically we have a scissor lift here, which uh, brings the hook up to it. So it's powered by a lead screw, and this moves the block here, which powers the scissor lift up. And then we have sensors throughout the, the system, the limit switches, to stop it as soon as it hits the bar. And then uh, the sensors activate, and then it stops the scissor lift from moving up. And then if the, if the bar moves at all, then we uh, just run it further until it hits it again. And then we drive forward and uh, hit this sensor here, and uh, then we can bring the scissor, the scissor lift down, and the hook will stay up. And then we have a winch inside here, which then uh, pulls the hook into our robot and lifts the robot up. All right, awesome job, guys. It looks like you guys really did well at this uh, event here, Rochester Rally, week 0.5. And I can't wait to see the rest of your robot and how you compete uh, Finger Lakes in week three. Thank you. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.